Hi, this is Liz. I'm a full-time IT professional. I'm running a YouTube channel, renovating an 18th century timber frame cottage, volunteering in three different clubs and associations, and traveling from place to place. Oh, and I'm living a slow life in the countryside. But is it even possible to live a slow lifestyle when we constantly feel as if we have to run from one task to the next? Today, I would like to share 8 tips on how to live a slow life if you are very busy. When we have too much going on to slow down, it's usually a combination of two aspects. Too many things we want or need to do, and spending too much time on each task due to inefficiency or perfectionism. I encourage you to really look at all the tasks you have on your plate and to really focus on which ones are truly important. Which ones are important so your life won't fall apart? Which ones are important to you personally because they involve people, hobbies or projects that mean a lot to you? You might have heard of this technique before. Rate each task in terms of importance and urgency. Then start with the tasks that are both important and urgent. Next, you move on to the ones that are important but not so urgent. If there is still time left, you can still move on to the ones that are urgent but not as important. And you can then skip the ones that are neither. Do you know the situation of writing an email and then rereading it 82 times, correcting tiny things that the recipient might interpret as weird? Spending 15 or 20 minutes on that mail just to get a simple question or point across? To then two minutes later receive a response that just reads, okay? Please let me know in the comments if you can relate. If it's not emails, it can be any other situation in which our perfectionism or unnecessary anxiety cause us to spend way too much time on things that are way too insignificant. I'm not saying be lazy or don't pay attention to details. I'm not saying stop striving to do your work well. But if you are like me and you spend too much time on unnecessary perfectionism, I encourage you to try an experiment that has helped me a lot. For a week or two, make it a point to really just let things be good enough. Reread that email once, then just press send. Try to get comfortable with the feeling of completing a task at a 80 to 100% satisfaction level, not 120. It frees up so much time and energy we can use to wind down and take it a bit slower without having to sacrifice any of the tasks we are trying to complete. We have a lot more time on our hands than we think we do. The trick is to stop wasting time and to start using time we didn't know we have. What we consider a waste of time is, of course, highly personal. There are activities some would consider wasted time that others consider their hobbies, and there is nothing wrong with that. If you struggle to slow down though because there is always too much to do, I would like to point you towards some habits that might or might not be wasting your time. I personally am always quite baffled when I hear people say they didn't have time or didn't get around to something, when I know for a fact they spent 3 hours watching TV last night. There is nothing wrong with wanting to watch the latest episode of your favorite series before you read spoilers all over the internet the next morning. I get it. But mindless watching without any real intention is a habit we can reconsider if we lack the time to get things done. The same goes for scrolling through social media. It is so easy to get caught up in endless scrolling. Make a conscious choice to avoid it during the day and maybe set aside a limited amount of time for it at night. If scrolling through social media or Netflix truly relaxes you and helps you unwind, that is of course perfectly fine. 
Very often, however, we could spend this time in a different way that feels both relaxing as well as way more fulfilling at the same time. Other common time wasters can be allowing frequent interruptions while doing something that cause you to lose your focus, activities that take way longer than they have to because we don't have the right equipment for them, or trying to multitask when this is actually not even possible. Now, how do we use time we didn't think we have? A great way to get things done is to use time we would spend waiting. At the bus stop, in the waiting room or while we are waiting for the water in our kettle to boil. These are often only a few minutes, but I'm frequently surprised how many small tasks we can actually get done within this time frame that we would have otherwise wasted. Emptying the dishwasher while waiting for the water to boil deleting unnecessary images or videos from our phone at the bus stop, replying to messages while waiting for our hair dye to take effect. There are so many occasions that actually give us extra time to complete micro-tasks that add up and free up more time for us to slow down and relax. A great way to make better use of our time is to combine activities. Get groceries on the way home when you pass by the store anyway instead of going there again. Take things to the basement of your house if you are going there anyway instead of going again when you decide to tidy up. One of my favorite ways to slow down as a busy person is to work in nature. If we are lucky and this works for our actual job, that's great. But I'm not necessarily just talking about our job. This can be applied to any organizational tasks for planning or messaging that we can do from a device such as a phone or tablet. Whenever I can and the weather permits it, I will take the chance to go outside, get some fresh air and take in the relaxing ambience of a quiet forest or pond. I will respond to messages, plan the days ahead, make phone calls or write voiceover scripts for my videos outside. If we are busy and have to get certain tasks done, we can at least combine work and relaxation to slow down a bit. habit that really helps me slow down and de-stress when things get busy is to limit the times when people can message me. This is particularly true for work conversation as I will turn off all notifications when I finish work for the day. But I also do this for private messages. Maybe you are like me and feel stressed out just by seeing how many messages are waiting on your phone, even if they are not urgent. They create this to-do flag in my head that I just can't get rid of. So I make it a point to leave my phone in my bag, place it somewhere where I will not look at it for the next couple hours, or simply switch to flight mode for a while. My phone is always on silent. If someone calls me, I will return their call once I have time for it. I also have turned off notifications from pretty much all apps, especially as social media apps such as Instagram tend to send a large amount of completely unnecessary notifications just to grab our attention. I will check my social media accounts once a day and that's it. There are many things we need to do but often there is a way to change how we do them. Enjoying a cup of coffee at home, watching the sunrise before heading out the door, might take us 10 minutes longer than drinking a coffee to go on the subway. But these 10 minutes can make all the difference when it comes to how we start our day. Taking a relaxing bath might take us a bit longer than a quick shower, but it also feels like a little spa treatment. Listening to a podcast or relaxing music while getting things done can make our to-dos feel so much less like work and so much more enjoyable. Especially when it comes to the life essentials such as eating, drinking, sleeping and getting ready, 
There is often so much more potential for a slowing down and for turning a necessity into a relaxing ritual. The changes we have to make are tiny, and yet they can really change how slow or fast-paced our life feels and how satisfied we are with how we spend our time that day. Try to rethink your daily routines and activities and find the potential to slow them down a bit. If we strive to live a slower life, we have to avoid overloading our to-do list with unrealistic tasks. It takes a while to learn how much we can actually get done in one day and how long things take. But we can relieve a lot of stress and pressure in our day-to-day -day lives by setting achievable goals and planning realistically instead of crowding our to-do list with 50 bullet points for a single day. Plan in a way that actually allows you to be done at some point at the end of the day. Give each task a time slot on your calendar instead of just writing it onto a long to-do list. This way, it's way easier to see how much we can realistically fit into our day and when we would start to overwhelm ourselves. If we plan ahead wisely, we can distribute our to-dos in a way that makes them way more manageable and avoid having to complete a ton of tasks last minute. Which leads me to the next point. Planning ahead is very important if we strive to live a slower life, especially if the current phase in our life is just busy. And despite all our efforts to not waste time and be smart about our to-dos, there is just nothing we can drop at the moment. To live slowly means to be able to rest and be at peace, knowing that everything takes the time it takes and that everything is being taken care of. We can give ourselves space to breathe, relax and recharge if we plan out our tasks in advance. Not only does that give us a clearer overview over what has to be done and when it's time for us to wind down and relax, it also reduces our mental load. Having to constantly think of things that need to be done drains us mentally, even without actually getting the tasks done. Write your to-dos and plans down. Assign them a time to complete them and then wipe them from your head. This allows us to actually switch off and focus on ourselves as our head isn't constantly filled with mental clutter. Being well organized and structured is a very valuable foundation if you would like to live a slower paced life. What is your favorite way to slow down when things get busy? Let me know in the comments. 